welcome to Marie's Scrappy Creations, where we sew the scraps of your life into beautiful creations. Now this week I have a project that I made for Christmas decor. Doesn't have to be Christmas time to make this. You could make this out of any scraps that you have. You can dig through your scrap pile for pieces that you can cut into five inches or whatever size you want to use for these. But I used a charm pack and a few scraps to make this adorable bunting. What do you think of that? My decor is all autumn, but Thanksgiving was two days ago. So now I need to switch over to decorate for Christmas. And I have always wanted to just make one of these. They're not difficult. So I thought, wow, I bet everyone would love to make one of these. And I know you guys have the scraps or the charms to make this. Do you have the charms? <laughs> it's charming. Okay, so this is what we're going to get busy with today. I made mine to hang right here. So in my next video, you'll see it hanging there. And maybe I'll make another one. Because this was just, it was really quick. It was fun. And I would like to make it out of my scrap pile next time just all different colors. So let's go see what it takes to make this. You guys can watch me make it and I hope you give it a try and then post it over on the Facebook group. Let's go over to the table and give this a try. You coming with me? Let's go. We do not need a lot for this week's project. Now, of course, you can see I'm making this from Christmas fabrics, but you could make it from Easter fabrics, maybe baby fabrics to decorate a newborn's nursery, or maybe you want a 4th of July. Or the possibilities are endless. Maybe you just want to match with whatever room you're, you're decorating. So I am using charm packs. So they're five inch squares. These ones were sent to me from Kimberly from her store, My Fabric Addiction One on Etsy. And I believe you can get this great big charm pack for under $15, but don't quote me. It's on her website, which I will link below. You could use five inch squares. You could use whatever size you want, smaller or larger, depending on how you want your bunting to look. Here's another part that is totally up to you. I cut it two and a half inches wide by width of fabric. Okay, so that's, mine is basically 43 inches, okay? And I may cut that shorter. It depends on how these line up because I haven't made this yet. I'm going to make it right along with you. And I also cut some five inch squares so that I had a variety of colors I want a little bit more in there other than the red and the green. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this to the ironing board and with the wrong side up, I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to press a crease. Then I'm going to fold both edges one at a time. I'll go and iron this to the middle, then I'll flip it and iron this to the middle so that, whoops, you know what I'm going for here, even though I can't hold it. Of course, I'm going to show you when we get back, but that's how it will be. So I'm going to do that and meet you back here and we'll go on to the next step. All right, I am all done with this. Now what I did on each end, so on each long end, I folded in about a half an inch okay so you fold in your half an inch and press and then i press to the middle and then folded both edges in so now it measures just under three quarters of an inch all the way across see the edges just, just meet up and that's what it should look like. Just like that. Okay, 
And again, I have not made this before. I'm making it with you, but I'm going to start by sewing 12 of these. I figured I'll use at least 10 by my estimation, but I'm going to make 12 just in case. So this is what we're going to do. You take your square, whatever size you're working with, and again, these are five inches, and you're going to fold it just like this, just in half. Now I'm going to hold mine with a pin or two. So I'm going to do this to 10 of, uh, 12 of them, just like this. So I'm going to pin these and I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. Okay, so I have a stack of these all pinned up and I'm going to chain piece them. And I thought that you might want to just watch me do this. So just in case you did, I brought you along. All right, I just got done chain piecing this whole thing, and let's see, I'll take the pins out first, because otherwise, whatever is left for pins in here, I will be sure to stab myself with. I took some out if I had to sew over them, or they would have gotten in the way. But as you could see, even though I sped that part of the video up, that did not take very long to chain piece these. This is a really quick project. It really, really is. Oh, there goes my iron. I need to go over and shake it back to life because it stops after, I think it's 10 minutes of non-use. It could be 15, but I'm all the time forgetting it. But also, I need to have it hot because the next part of what we're doing, that's how I put everything away that I have over here, uh, the next part of what we're doing involves the iron. I know some of you don't care for the iron, but you're not even going to have to use it all that much. And when my channel was fairly new, one of you awesome people gifted this to me. And this has been the handiest little thing ever. I was excited when I got it because I had seen other people uh, with sewing blogs and YouTube channels use them. But I had never tried one. You put your old rotary cutter blade in there, but see, you can't cut yourself with it. It's all safe. It's just, yeah, you'd have to really stick your fingernail down in there to cut yourself. I've never cut myself on it. All right. I'm trying to show where you can see, possibly. I used white thread here. Oh, here, maybe the red thread you can see. Now, I am not going to trim close on the open end. Okay, that's the open end. I just, and I'm not even going to trim close down here. I just want to trim it a little bit. See? So I'm going to do those. And that's just to get a better point when you turn it right side out. See? So you just, just want to get in there. And I'm just using my pinking shears for that. You could use regular scissors. Just trim it out a little bit. If you do happen to uh, 
cut into your sewing line, just go back and sew over it a little bit. No one will ever know, and I won't tell anyone. I promise to keep my mouth shut. I will not say a word. I wish I could give credit to where I saw this. I've seen buntings made in a few different ways, but making them out of squares was genius. But if you're anything like me, you go all around from one end of the internet to the other, and you don't always remember where you've been. Okay, so we're gonna flip these out like this. I just do, when I'm flipping things like this out, I just do them all like this, and then I'll go poke all my corners all at once. Just gonna poke. I know they don't look right yet, but have no fear. Have no fear. Oh, I love this fabric. Look at the swirls of Isn't that pretty. Love it. I'm going to have to make a few items out of this charm pack. Oh, and this is another favorite. Look at that. Beautiful. Tone on tone green. Love it. This wreath fabric I have had for more years than I could count, and it was gifted to me. At first I thought it was directional, but then I noticed that the wreaths are going in all different directions, so I used it for this project. And when it was first gifted to me, I didn't use it right away, and I've probably had it easily 8 or 10 years, and I think it's from the 80s, so it's got a little bit of age to it. And I was afraid of it yellowing if I didn't use it soon. I had to go get my, I call her Sally. For anyone who's new here, Sally is something. My husband took a dowel, sharpened it like a pencil, although he blunted the end a little bit. We had this, this was already painted. It was in some crafting thing we bought secondhand, either at a secondhand store or yard sale. And this was just a round circle. Someone had painted it for like a doll head, and he just flattened it off so it doesn't roll and I call her Sally and she helps me poke out all my corners so very gently I want you to poke your corner like that on each and every one so I'm going to pause that camera while I do this because I don't want to bore you guys and go to the next part now, it kind of looks like a container. <laughs> uh, it reminds me of those plastic bags that you uh, decorate cookies and cakes with. Anyway, you're going to take this line that is our seam line, and you're going to line that up with our point. Okay, I'm going to lay it just like that. You're going to take your iron and press. Just like that. I guess I could use a little bit of steam. Just like that. I take this and do a fold over. I did try one of these triangles. I haven't made a bunting, but I did try one of these triangles out. And this is what I did. I folded over and I pressed it to make a crease. And then you're just going to tuck that right down inside like that. Okay, so this is what you'll look like. Don't worry if everything's not perfect up here because it's going to be inside here. Whoops, we're going to lay it in there like this. So it will hide any imperfections that you happen to have. See, mine isn't exactly perfect. And yes, I could go back and refold this and my OCD, I probably will do that off camera, but I'm just saying it really won't matter if I didn't do that. No one would guess. Yeah, see, I just fixed it. Okay, I'm going to do a few more. Um, actually, I'll do them all here on camera. I'll just speed it up, but that's my pile, and you'll see how easy this is.
All right, I have my stack all folded and ironed, as you saw. And I did trim a, th a few threads here and there if there was something hanging. And I kind of put them green, red, green, red, white. I, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but we'll see. So how many did I end up with? Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, I know why, because I did an extra white because I dropped one and couldn't find it or something. Anyway, okay, so here we go. We have this strip, which I don't know what to call it, but anyway... <laughs> Uh, let me measure this because I know people will ask how long it ended up. It started off by width of fabric and right now it measures about 42 inches, I would say. Just a little over 42. So the open end is downward. Okay. And we're going to overlap these a little bit and you're going to need pins or clips. I'm going to leave, okay, so remember the open end is going upward. Now, because I'm going to hang these up with a tack or something like that, I need to leave some space. So I'm going to leave one inch, just one inch right there. I'm going to pin this in place. I'll probably come back and put my pins in a different direction here before I sew. Now, you could put one against the other without overlapping like this, so that this one comes up and just touches that one. I don't know, let me see. Hmm. I think I'm just gonna barely overlap mine, and I mean barely, by like a quarter of an inch. It's hard to do for the camera. <laughs> okay, let me see. Yeah, it's just barely overlapped. All right, now, I had to laugh. Look at that. That is an inch and an eighth, maybe, and I did not measure that, so that was pretty cool. Uh, what I was going to say, what I was thinking of, if you get over to this end and it doesn't line up as well as mine just happened to, you could always just cut it off, fold it over, enough to make it fit exactly where you want it to okay and that would be no big deal so the other things that i wanted to talk about right now were this let me bring over my little 
kind of like a tray of goodies here. <laughs> because, as you know, you can always change things up to suit your needs, your taste, whatever you want to do. You could take buttons. You Maybe you have some vintage buttons that were your grandmother's or your mom's or somebody's. And you want to use some of the vintage buttons. Or maybe you have some rickrack to go across here. If silver, that might look nice. Maybe you have some lace and that would look nice along here. Of course, you don't even really have to use the fabric like I did. There's a lot of different ways you could go. You could buy ribbon, could buy burlap, and get a totally different look, which would look awesome. I, I like that kind of decorating. So see how that would look? That would look nice as well. And then, let's see what else we have here. There's ribbon, believe. Ones with little candies. You could put those across there. You could put a little scrap of fabric. Let me grab my little bin. Oh, there's one that's just perfect. Uh, let's say you took a little piece of fabric like this and you put it on here and you want to put a button on there isn't that cute and it dresses it up a little bit or maybe a little tiny red button okay there's another idea something else would be say you cut out the word the letters yeah cut out the words cut out the letters to smell spell christmas or maybe for a child's room, you spell out the child's name and you put one letter per bunting triangle. And of course, these could be three triangles long. They could be 20. They can be however short or long you want them to be. There's so many different ways you can dress them up. You can use decorative stitches. And that's another thing you could do. When these are pressed and ready to go on here, you could go around with some decorative stitching before you put it in here to show off some of the stitches on your sewing machine. Because those of us who have those sewing machines, we don't always get a chance to use those as often as we might like. All right, so now I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I won't bore you with that part. I'm just going to sew about one eighth of an inch from the edge. But before I do, I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to check. You don't want any ripples or anything. I'm going to put a few more pins in mine, but that's just me. I like to make sure See, I'm feeling to make sure both of these are lining up. You want to make sure that this has come all the way to the top. You want it to stay exactly where you have it while you sew it. And I know sometimes I tend to use more pins than a lot of people, but I like everything to be exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine. I'll sew this up. And I'll meet you back here. There, I have it all stitched, just an eighth of an inch from the edge. I used a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Normally when I top stitch, I use a 3.0 or 3.5 millimeter. But because I'm holding on these little flags, even though they don't weigh much, I thought it would be best if I... Uh, use the 2.5 but you use whatever you're comfortable with so i hope you make this whether it's christmas when you see this or you're making it for some other reason holiday just your living room or kitchen 
sewing room decor. You could use sewing fabrics and put all kinds of sewing charms hanging off it. There, there are just so many possibilities for this, but I hope you make one of these. I hope you have fun. I hope you show it on the Facebook group. And if you're not already a member of the Facebook group, you go to Facebook and type in Marie Scrappy Creations, or you go down below this video in the description box and you will find a link there. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? There's projects like this all the time and you'll get notifications. When you subscribe, make sure you click the bell and go up to the top where it says all because otherwise you will only get certain notifications and not all of them. The creative word for today is bunting because this is indeed a bunting. So thank you so much for being with me today. I hope you sew one of these. I hope you have fun. And remember, be kind out there. The world needs more of that. And I'll see you next time right here at Marie Scrappy Creations. Bye-bye.